who was the guy who predicted civiliz- our civilization would collapse by 2025? Yeah, this is a Peter Turchin. Peter Turchin. That's yeah, right. so he wrote a book called End Times, and he was a professor at the University of Connecticut and is now at Oxford in England. And I'm just becoming familiar with his work. He is an ecologist by trade, and he studies um, how societies collapse and what we might do to forestall or or at least deflect a bit yeah awesome there we go yeah <laughs> and so his point is and it's all based on math models of a study of over a hundred societies wow yeah and well i like that he starts out by saying i'm not it's not it's not a political argument uh, what he's insisting is that we can predict mathematically Uh, when a society is going to collapse. And he argued 20 years ago that the collapse of American society is inevitable. Uh, And the argument is based on a a couple of things going on. Uh, But the the main thing um, is um, he talks, first of all, uh, about an overabundance of cultural elites. So he's like, look, one thing it is he's like all societies are hierarchical um you you know stop being like uh walt disney and knocking people for being organized in a bureaucratic fashion and that that and it's there are going to be people that are richer than others and and he's basically well that's the way it has always been right, but then he says yeah but there are certain times historically where, the, and he describes it metaphorically as like a game of musical chairs. He's like, look, um, there's only one president still. You know, there's only 50 senators, but there's a whole lot more people that want to go to Harvard. Uh, and, uh, and so in the old days, there weren't that, most of the admissions to these schools were all legacy. You know, you had to be white. You had to be Protestant. Well, now there's all kinds of folks clamoring for admission, but there's still the same amount of elite positions. And and what Turchin said is what that does is to create a host of disaffected uh, wannabes. And, and so and that that's where a lot of populist movements start. And so he points out, if you look at uh, what's going on uh, right now, uh, you know, you've got Donald Trump, you know, proclaiming himself, you know, one of the people. No, but he's not one of the people. Mm -hmm. You know, his dad gave him a million dollars when he was still in diapers. He went to Penn. Ted Cruz. Do you know where he went to school? I have no idea. Princeton. All right. Uh, What's his face? Josh Hawley. Uh, uh, the senator from Missouri, uh, he went to Stanford. Uh, DeSantis, uh, yeah. Ron DeSantis, he went to Yale and Harvard. The the guy who's the senator in Louisiana, I think his name is Kennedy. Anyway, he went to Oxford. In other words, these people that are pretending that they're you know spraying cheese whiz on a cracker down on a twelve pack of beer in the trailer park that are leading these populist revolts, they're not really no. working class people. They just want to take over the power. It's all optics. It's all optics. All right, so that's one thing that Turchin says uh, often starts the decomposition of societies is when there's too many people vying for positions of power, but more understandable. Is, and then he says at the same time that that's happening. So he's like, you got a lot of elites that are disappointed but then he's like yeah but then what's really happening are rich corporate interests uh sucking the lifeblood out of the poor all right so america peaked around 1970 something in the aftermath uh, of world war ii uh, because uh because of the new deal uh, which wouldn't have happened if rich oligarchs uh, didn't accept a higher tax rate. 
Uh, all of that changed uh, the day that Ronald Reagan uh, was elected president. He ripped the solar panels off the White House. Ivan Bosky, convicted felon, said greed is good. Uh, what good is the moon if you can't buy or sell it? Mm. And until then, as wealth rose in America, so did minimum wage and so did the income of the average American, the average white American. The rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, but that changed in 1980. Since Reagan's presidency adjusted for inflation, the average working class wage has declined, whereas the average CEO in America now makes in a day what their employees make in a year. Uh, and the last time that the richest 50 people on earth owned half of earth or more uh, was in the Gilded Age just before the depression. So anyway, what Turchin says is what happens when the rich get too greedy is that the poor get miserable, right? They get to the point where there's not enough hours in the day to work at Walmart, which by the way, has more part-time workers than anyone on earth. So they don't have to pay them benefits. Right. So anyway, <clears throat> you're, you're at a point uh, where it is not physically possible to survive on minimum wage, uh, and um, and people then get angry, they get depressed, their life expectancy goes down, and this is the point where the Hitlers and the Trumps uh, and the Mussolinis and the guy in Brazil and the uh, guy in Hungary, uh, this is where the fascists wannabes tend to arise uh, because they come into power in order to deflect the anger and despair of the masses mm. um, in pursuit of maintaining the financial interests of the rich. And he calls that a wealth pump. And, and again, without any politics or judgment, he's just saying this is the way it is but how specifically does it collapse? He says that, there you go, you are awesome, Danny. No, because what he says is, um, I wanna be really mathematical, and, and what I can tell you is that uh, when the discrepancy between wealth gets to a certain level, that collapse is inevitable, what I can't tell you is how long it will take what form it will take, and whether or not people in power at the time will notice what's happening and consider doing something to address the underlying concerns. And so he gives historical examples in England hundreds of years ago, and I'm not a historian, where he's like, oh, well, here in one century, the shit hit the fan, and then there was a civil war for 200 years. But then he's like, oh yeah, but in this other time, uh, the king realized uh, that maybe uh, it'd be better if everybody got fed. And so they tweak the way that resources are distributed mm. to, uh, uh, to, to, to address the anger and fear and material deprivation in a way that restores some kind of social equilibrium. Now, again, this is not a Marxist diatribe because what Turchin is saying is that societies come and go. They all collapse eventually. Right. And so what we need to do is to think about uh, what we're going to do or not. But what it looks like we're doing now is, if anything, accelerating the rate of disintegration by increasing the transfer of wealth uh, from the public to the few. Yeah.